next warm up is going to be for groundwork. So most of the warm up is going to be focused on ground activities. First, let's get those legs warmed up with some sinking elbows, alternating sides. Let's do 20. Each knee, sun, chi, go, rok, shichi, hachi, ku, ju, juichi, juni, ju san, ju shi, ju go, ju rok, ju shichi, ju hachi, ju ku, niju. All right, nice. Hopefully those legs are nice and warm because the first thing we're going to do is knee walking. He's a rookie. If you've never done knee walking before, it's not that difficult. It just takes a little while to get used to. So you always put your foot down before your knee. That way you can control how hard your knee hits the ground. And then you bring the opposite knee up and point it the direction you want to go. Once again, foot first, then knee. And if you keep your heels together in the back, then you'll be able to move the direction you want fluidly and smoothly. If you have bad knees or hardwood floors, this exercise might be a little tricky. But if not, I highly encourage you to practice He's a Rookie, especially now that you have extra time at home to practice because it's super important to your ability to being able to move on the ground. When you get good at Hizuruki, you can also do backwards. Once again, you want to point your knee the direction you're going. So point your knee the direction you're going, even if it's backwards. You can also do spinning. That way you can go any direction you want. So go ahead and pause the video now and work on He's a Rookie. Welcome back. I hope your He's a Rookie has improved. And now we're going to do shrimping. Shrimping is another really difficult ground technique. And to be honest, I'm not sure you can see the lines on the ground. But if not, imagine that there is a line that goes from my fingertips through my shoulders to my fingertips. Okay? And when I shrimp, my goal is to get my butt on that side of that line. Okay? So I have an attacker on top of me, and I need to escape. To do so, first I'm going to bring my feet up as close as I possibly can. Then I'm going to lift my hips as high as I can. I'm going to use my elbows and my forearms to push off on their knee and their hip. And then I'm going to use my legs to push my butt on the other side of that line. If I do this correctly, I end up in a little curled up shrimp position, which is why it's called shrimping. And now, my butt is above that line that I started out where my head was. Okay? I have to turn on my side to do this. So I'm here, I bring my feet up, I bring my hips up, I get my arms ready to push. So this is slightly easier with an opponent because you can push off of them. And then I'm going to use this foot and turn on my side, this foot and my arms to push my butt where my head used to be. Now, if you don't have a lot of space, you can just reset each time. If you have more space, you can do laps. Don't forget, of course, to try the other side. So if I'm going that way, I want to use this leg. If I'm going to the right, I use my left leg. So I get my feet up, 
I get my hips up, I use my arms to push off my opponent, I go onto my side and get my butt the opposite direction. That's shrimping. One word of caution, if you're home on carpet, make sure you're wearing long sleeves and long pants or you will get rug burn. All right, practice the shrimping. It's a very important skill to defending yourself on the ground. All right, how did that shrimping go? Next, let's do some leg ups. Leg ups are a way to build core muscle strength and attribute training. So all we're gonna do is lay back and get our legs as high as we can, getting our hips completely off the ground. Okay, let's do 20 of those. Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Rok, Shichi, Hachi, Ku, Ju. Did you get that? Now, for the next 10, we're going to twist. So we have our legs here. When we go up, we're going to twist. Okay? Ichi. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Ro. Shi chi. Achi. Ku. Ju. Great job on those. Catch your breath and then we'll move on to the next one. We're going to do kick throughs. So to do a kick through, you're going to get into a mountain climber position. And you're going to take your right leg between your left arm and your left leg. And then raise that left arm up, sitting on a Krishna bear. Then you go back to mountain climber and switch. Okay? So we're going to do 20 of those. 10 each side. Easy.
which means we're putting the bottom of our foot flat on the ground and our knee pointed up. Without raising up, we're going to kick through into a reverse scarf position. Then our knee kicks over, back to a low stays up. Outrigger, kick through, kick over. The whole time staying low, not rising up. We can do the same on the opposite. Outrigger, kick through, kick over. Outrigger, kick through, kick over. You can also add rear circle rolls that go straight into the kick through position. If you're familiar with that and you have enough space. So practice the outrigger drill now and focus on staying low and not rising up in between each transition because giving your opponent space is giving them an escape or a chance to strike. Okay, outrigger drill. work on our falls with a slap and pop-up disengagement. So when we slap, we have to make sure that we do it at the right time, after our butt hits, before our back hits. We have to make sure that we pull it right back as soon as we hit, that we're slapping close to our legs, not way up high where it's going to injure our shoulder. And we want to make sure that we're not catching ourselves with our arms when we fall. We are simply slapping and pulling back. Then on our side, fall, side falls, let's make sure we do that awesome pop-up disengagement. Okay, so let's start with back falls. Let's do an on my count. Ready? Make sure you have room behind you. You're not going to hit your head. Back falls from standing with a slap. Ichi. Good. Remember, if your left leg goes down, your left hand slaps. Knee, up, sun, up, chi, up, go, up, rope, up, chi chi, up, hachi, up. disengagement. It's really important that if you fall because someone shoved you, you get up away from your attacker with a guard. So I'm going to face this way so you can see it better. A left side fall, you're going to go down on your left, slap with your left, and do a complete side fall being a ball before you start the pop-up disengagement. Go to your elbow, Kick the attacker, go to your hands, jump away from the attacker. Let's do that all together. Left side fall with pop up disengagement. Ichi, up, up, knee, up, up, song.
job. Make sure you're really jumping backwards away from the attacker on those pop-up disengagements. Next, we're going to do our front falls from standing. So remember, even though we're standing, we want to squat first to minimize our impact, especially if you're doing this maybe not on the most padded of surfaces. Try not to do this outside. A carpeted living room is usually best. And if you have a hard floor, just go from squatting. So don't even worry about standing. But we're gonna do it all the way down to our elbows. So make sure you still squat, you still drop to your elbows, you look to the side and you yell. And when you jump back up, jump back up in a fighting stance, okay? So that, let's do it all together. Ichi, ah! Knee, ah! Son, she, ah! Go, rock, ah! She. Next we're going to do the fast fall game. In this game I call out falls, whether it be side falls, front falls, or back falls, and you do whatever fall I say. So if I say left side fall, you do a left side fall. Bonus points for doing a pop-up disengagement. So round one we're going to start off slow. Ready? Front fall. Back fall. Right side fall. Right side fall. Front fall. Alright, getting faster. Round two. Back fall. Side fall. Front fall. Front fall. Right side fall. Back fall. Still with us? Ready for the danger round? Round number three. Round three. Right side fall. Front fall. Back fall. Back fall. Left fall. Right fall. Front fall. Front fall. Back fall. Right side fall. Front circle roll. Last dismiss. <laughs> Go. Next, we're going to do talk about the rumor. So the rumor on the side in Sanskrit says seven falls, eight rises. Which means if he falls down once, he gets back up again. So let's practice being the rumor that without having to buy the rumor. So you could be an onza or really any single stance. So you lean to the side, boom, and you come back up without using your hands. And you keep doing that. Until you're facing the same way you started. Now you practice that. Next thing we're going to work on are sweeps on the ground. So we're going to start with the three point backward sweep. So this involves the front knee dropping down, your hands anchoring on the ground, stick out your leg like an outrigger. And we're going to turn our whole body, not just our leg, but our whole body around. All the way up. Our front leg, I guess our back leg, if we're in a fighting stance here, is going to do the sweeping. So we're going to put our front knee down, hands on the ground, sweep, 
Take your body with you. On my count. Ichi. Three. Seven. Except our front knee is going to drop. Put our hands in front of us. Sweep using the front part of our leg. And all the way up. So, it looks like this. Three point forward sweep. On my cap. Ichi. Bring our hand up to the wrist, 
Bring your hand to check the elbow, and then strike, possibly with the back fist. So we're going to go wrist, elbow, back fist. In other words, we're just adding on to the parry we just did. So this is a crescent parry with an attack on this shoulder. Ichi. Knee. Son. She. Go. Rope. Chi Chi. Hachi. Ku. Ju. Excellent. Let's do the other side. So the attack's coming here. You're still going to do that cross parry. Then check the elbow down and hit. So cross parry, check that elbow down, hit. If you add some hip rotations to this, it'll feel a lot better. Cross parry, check the elbow, strike. Okay, on my count. Crescent parry. Ichi. Knee. Son. She. Go. Rope. Shi Chi. Hachi. Ku. Ju. Great job. Those were your crescent pairings. We're going to do press pairings. Press pairings might feel a little odd without a partner, but it's good to practice the motion. So you're still going to hide the target and bring your hands up naturally, then turn them over to check. Okay? This hand, for example, could check the elbow, palm strike. You could ride it in, fall with an elbow. You could snatch the wrist, entangled arm. There are a lot of techniques you could do from a press pair. But the idea is hide the target, two hands come up, in a syncopated check. Okay? So here we go. Press parry on my count. Ichi. Ni. Son. Shi. Go. Rope. Shi chi. Hachi. Ku. Ju. Excellent. Let's do the other side. Someone's pushing on this side, back fisting from this side, etc. Ready? Hands come up. Check. Ichi. Ni. Son. Shi. Go. Rope. Shichi. Hachi. Ku. Ju. Great job on those press pairs. They take a lot of imagination if you didn't wrangle a partner, but they are very useful. So keep working on those and get better at all three pairs. Great job. We are going to work next on three, six, nine footwork. So this uses the octagon footwork that we've been practicing. Hopefully you've gotten good at that. Now what we're going to do here is illustrate when you would use the different angles. And this isn't the only example of when you would use them, but it's a good way to practice. For this drill, you will need a partner. And it could be any loved one because all they're doing is coming at you like a zombie. Nothing's going to happen to them. We're not throwing them. We're not breaking their arm. We're not choking them out. They're simply coming at us like a zombie and we're getting out of the way. So you should be able to wrangle a loved one to do something as simple as that, hopefully. Okay. So for this one, we're going to start at a nine foot distance and the bad guy or the attacker is just going to come like a zombie. Okay. Now, if the person is coming from a great distance, you have plenty of time to react. If I went straight back, the, my attacker would just keep coming and bulldoze me over. So instead, I want to move forward. If I move straight forward, obviously I'm running into the path of an oncoming bulldozer. 
So instead, I want to use those forward diagonals that we have in our octagon. So he comes at me. I step diagonal into one of those short front stances where I'm forward weighted. I stepped off on the half right front diagonal with my shuffle step, and he ate an elbow for attacking me. Okay? The elbow is obviously optional. Don't do that on your loved ones or they won't agree to be your partner anymore. So let's try it out one more time. He comes. I step on the diagonal and he passes by. Okay? I'll show it to you from a different angle. I'm going to go half left front this time, the other diagonal. Okay? All right. So give that one a shot. Next, we're going to be at a six foot distance. So my attacker is slightly closer. I might not have enough time to go with that forward diagonal. So instead, I'm going to step left or right. It doesn't matter which, if he's coming equal weighted. Okay? So I just do my shuffle step to the side, my hands are up, and I can throw that elbow in there for good measure if I want. Okay? That is your six foot distance footwork. You can also, of course, do it the other direction. Okay, so I'm just doing my octagon footwork with an attacker. Now, if my attacker is three foot distance, which is pretty close, definitely too close for comfort. If I, I can step straight back on this one if they don't plow me down. If they're really coming hard and committed, that's where I'm going to use my back diagonals. So we're starting at that three foot distance, he's still just going to push for safety and I'm going to step back as he comes through, he can still eat an elbow or a palm strike. Okay? I like the palm strike from that distance because it gives me more of a disengaging distance than an elbow. So as you can see, it doesn't matter which angle you step off if they come at you forward weighted or equal weighted. One last time, please. All right, so go practice your three, six, nine footwork. Next, we're gonna work on some kicks. We're going to start with the cross stop kick. So make sure you angle this foot out yeah. and kick across. We're aiming for the knee and we're kicking across our body to stomp the knee out. Uh, repeat after me on my count. Ichi, hya! Ni, hya! San, hya! Shi, hya! Go, hya! Rook, hya! Chi chi, hya! Hachi, hya, ku, hya, ju, hya, switch sides, ichi, hya, ni, hya, san, hya, shi, hya, go, hya, ro, hya, shi chi, hya, hachi, hya, ku, hya, ju, hya. Switch sides. Our next kick is a rear kick. So we're going to stand facing this way and we're going to kick behind us on a diagonal. So we chamber our knee up and kick it backwards. One more time, pull your knee up. Yeah. And look over your shoulder at your target. Ichi. Yeah. Knee. Yeah. Sun. Yeah. She, yeah, go, yeah, rook, yeah, chichi, yeah, hachi, yeah, coop, yeah, juke, yeah, switch sides, ichi, yeah, knee, yeah. Sun, yeah. Sweet. 
Shit. Go. Shit. Rope. Shit. Chichi. Shit. Hachi. Shit. Coop. Shit. Last one. Jup. Shit. Switch sides. Next, we're going to do round kick. Back leg round kick. So, if we're starting with our right foot back, we're going to pick up our right foot with the top of our foot, and we're going to kick yeah, around. Make sure your leg starts horizontal with your knee. Ichi, yeah. Knee, yeah. Sun, yeah. She, yeah. Go, yeah. Row, yeah. Chichi, yeah. Hachi, yeah. Ku, yeah. And last one. Ju, yeah. Switch sides. Ichi, yeah. Ni, yeah. Sun, yeah. Shi, yeah. Go, yeah. Ro, yeah. Chichi, yeah. Hachi, yeah. Ku, yeah. Last one. Ju, yeah. Back on your right foot back. Our next kick is the front snap kick. And we're going to start. There are three types of front snap kicks, and we're going to do one of the three. The first kick is with the top of the foot to the groin. The second kind is with the ball of your foot kicking out a knee. And the third kind is to the stomach or to the hips to push the enemy back. And you can choose which of these front kicks you want to do. But I'm going to demonstrate the first kind, the top of the foot coming up to the groin. Ichi, hya, ni, hya, san, hya, shi, hya, go, hya, ru, hya, chichi, hya, hachi, hya, ku, hya, ju, hya, switch sides. Make sure you bring your knee up first before you kick. Ichi, hya, ni, hya. Sun, hya, chi, hya, go, hya, ru, hya, chi, chi, hya, hachi, hya, ku, hya, ju, hya. Switch sides. I've got one more kick for you, and that's the back leg crescent kick. We're gonna bring your knee up, and our foot is going to make a rainbow all the way around, and we're gonna put it down in front. This kicks generally to the head, so make sure it's high up. Ichi, hya. Ni, hya. Zan, hya. Shi, hya. Go, hya. Ro. Chi chi, hya. Hachi, hya. Ku, hya, and ju, hya. Switch sides. Ichi, hya, ni, hya, san, hya, shi, hya, ku, hya, ru, hya, chichi, hya. Hachi, hya, ku, hya, last one, ju, hya, those were your kicks for today, good job. Alright guys, so we're supposed to learn the parts of the body in Japanese. So this is Atama, Atama, Kata, 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 Kata. Kata. He's a... He's a... Ashi!
Ashi. Ashi. Atma. Atma. Kata. Kata. Giza. Giza. Ashi. All right, now we also need to know the parts of the face. Me. 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 Mimi. 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 Kuchi. 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 Hana. 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 Atama. Atama. Kata. Kiza. Ashi. Ashi. Me. Me. Mimi. Kuchi. Hana. All right. So you touch the body part. I call out as we sing the song. Here we go. How'd you do? Let's try it again. Here we go. Ready?